At this point, we're ready to begin our installation of Red Hat 7.3. So I'm going to go ahead and start us off by powering my system on. And I'm going to go ahead and have it choose to boot to the CD-ROM because that's where my media is located in my installation files. This is our main installation screen. This will allow us to choose most of the common options when installing Red Hat 7.3. And as you can see, from top to bottom, we can choose our default graphical mode install by simply pressing Enter. We can type in text for a text mode install, which will not utilize any mouse drivers. And if we're having any kind of video issues during the installation process, we have some options available to us there. And we can continue on down and choose various options that we've discussed before to allow us some flexibility when installing Linux. We'll take a quick look at some of the other screens that are available to us, such as the general screen, which will allow us to get a little bit more information on some video troubleshooting. The kernel parameter screen. And this is actually where we can go into some pretty specific kernel options. Now, I use this primarily for setting up key system components that are not directly supported by this distribution. For example, alternate or old SCSI drivers and older key hardware such as processors and RAM to allow us to install it even if those components aren't supported by this particular distribution. And finally, our F4 screen is our rescue screen. This will allow us to go ahead and move into and try to recover any existing Linux installations. So we're going to choose our default option, which is our graphical install. So we just press Enter, and it will go ahead and move into the installation process for us. It will load the various images and the different components that are necessary for the operating system to be initialized and installed. Now the first screen we're going to see is an informational screen, just letting us know a little bit about Red Hat. Before we see that, we're going to see a program called Anaconda, which is the actual installation and initialization program used by many distributions of Linux. So this tells us a little bit about the operating system itself, where we can get more information about that operating system, and a few tips and tricks on how to move through the installation process quickly. So we'll go ahead and move forward. By default, we've got our English language selected, and you can see here some additional options that are available to us. Now right off the bat, we configure our keyboard. The reason that this is important is because the keyboard is going to play a key role in moving forward with the installation if the graphical environment fails. Now, there's an option down here that you may or may not be familiar with, and it's called Dead Keys. One of the problems with a 105 key or less keyboard is that it doesn't support non-standard or special characters. Another option that you may or may not be familiar with is the option to either enable or disable Dead Keys. And just to kind of give you some background on that, one of the limitations of using a 105 key keyboard is that it doesn't allow you to perform single keystrokes to make special characters, such as what you see over here in the sidebar. So we can actually type those characters in by using multiple key presses or a key sequence. By enabling dead keys, this allows us to perform those operations if necessary. If we disable those dead keys, then we won't be able to create those characters using that standard keyboard. So we're going to leave the default and enable those dead keys. Now we actually have the option here to choose what mouse we're going to be using. I'm choosing the option to use a PS2 mouse, which is what I have installed. And we can also emulate three buttons, which will give us the option to perform hotkeys that will allow us to get the same functionality as a three button mouse even if we don't have one. Now we actually get to our in